Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.7.7 and DECA Ironworks Simulations JF17 Thunder Module. Welcome to tutorial 11, the C802 AKG air launched cruise missile. This is very similar to the previous tutorial where we were talking about the C-802AK anti-shipping missile. This is actually a further development of the same missile with some slight modifications. This version has a, a greater range. It's capable of more than 150 kilometers of flight time. Uh, and rather than having a sea scanning radar, uh, this version actually has a TV optical sensor in the nose, uh, which can be used in combination with a data link pod, which you can see here I have mounted on the center line station uh, to conduct a man in the loop style attack as your terminal phase. Alternatively, the missile just guides using INS, so it will guide on a set of coordinates. Uh, the man in the loop um, kind of terminal guidance is optional. You can just hit a set of coordinates if you want. However, if you need that extra accuracy, or if you need the ability to strike potentially a moving target, although that might be a little bit hard with a missile like this, um, you have that ability. And yeah, a very, very long range. Quite comparable to, uh, in, in Western service, the SLAM or SLAM-ER missiles, which can be launched by the F-18 in DCS. Uh, launch criteria are quite similar to the AK version of the missile. Uh, your minimum altitude being 1,600 feet, maximum altitude being 24,600 feet, and it must be launched at less than Mach 0.9. Uh, the data link pod has a um, kind of antenna pickup which works full 360 degrees. So the air, your aircraft can be facing in any direction and the data pod will function. However, the emissions from the missile only operate in a 120 degree cone to the rear of the missile. So in effect, you have to remain behind the missile after you launch it in order that the data link will correctly operate. If you wander outside of those parameters, the data link will tell you that it's lost the signal to the missile. Um, this one is actually quite cool. It does a little bit more than uh, the Hornet's data link uplink does with the SLAM or SLAM ER in that it actually does give you um, in-flight information about the missile rather than just a video feed. In the Hornet you just get a video feed at the end uh, when the missile goes active. With this one you actually get continuous updates uh, from the, the missile on you know, which of the, the current route points it's following, its its current distance to the next one and things like that. So it's, it's actually quite nice. You, you get a bit of en route information. Um, there are three modes in which the missile can be deployed. I'm going to uh, demonstrate all three. The first two are quite similar to the AK. Uh, you have direct mode, which operates in pretty much exactly the same way as the 802 AK. Uh, it attacks your current sensor point of interest with an optional turn point, which can be one of your RP points, uh, one of your route points. So RP 1 to 6 are available. They correspond with waypoints 30 to 35 in your INS. Uh, and the man in the loop uh, sensor will become active 20 kilometers from the target. However, you can actually manually engage it at any time, although that will immediately take manual control of the missile, so it might not be what you're looking for. Uh, COO mode, again, quite similar. However, in this case, you can't enter a set of coordinates. You need to make use of one of the pre-planned or PP points uh, in your INS. You have available to you pre-planned points one to four. These are actually the same points that are used by uh, JDAMs and certain other guided weapons in the JF-17, but I'll be demonstrating those later. Those correspond with waypoints number 36 to 39. So your, your missile will attack one of the PP points uh, and again has the ability to route via a turn point, which would be a route point. The final mode is manual mode. And this is by far the most advanced uh, mode in which the missile can operate. Uh, in manual mode, the missile will follow in sequence all of your route points, up to six that you've defined, uh, with no target definition. So what will happen is two kilometers before the last routing point, the missile will go active and you must then take manual control of the missile to strike your target. You don't need to feed it a sensor point of interest or a set of coordinates before launch. It will simply follow the waypoints that you've given it and then go active, giving you man-in-the-loop control. Uh, and man-in-the-loop is mandatory for manual mode. 
Just going to let that B1 take off. <laughs> and uh, you can only carry the 802 AKG uh, on the inner pylons, so your maximum loadout is as shown, two missiles on the inner pylons. Uh, data link pod can be carried on the center line or on the outer pylons. I've just put it on the center line here, because for today's mission we don't need the targeting pod. A an, an alternative uh, loadout would be to put the data pod and the WMD pod on the outer pylons, so you could operate that way as well. So, uh, there's not that much pre-setup, so I'm simply going to get the aircraft in the air, and en route to the target, and then I will demonstrate each of the modes in the series. See you there. Okay, you rejoin me in the cockpit, and let's get set up to do our first launch of the C-802 AKG. Uh, I'm first going to demonstrate direct mode, which is where, of course, we're attacking our sensor point of interest with an optional route point. Let me just confirm to you that I have already set up that route point. If I go into destination here on the UFC, it automatically brings up the destination page on the left multifunction display. Uh, as before, routing points are waypoints 30 to 35. I've created one route point, route point number one, at waypoint 30. That's already entered. That will actually, actually, let me just show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to attack, attack a, a, a target at this airfield, and I've set my route point up here near the coast. I want the missile to come in here and then fly down from the north. Uh, you would maybe do that for reasons of avoiding particular types of air defense or avo avoiding um, kind of complex terrain or whatever. I'm just doing it as a demonstration. So my route point is here. Uh, I've also created a pre-planned point, PP1, which is waypoint number 36. That we will use for the COO attack that we'll do next. So with that done, let's bring the EFIS back up and let's start setting up the missile. So uh, first thing to do, actually I'm going to hit return and bring us back to the main page there. Uh, I'm going to take my T1 switch and push it backwards. That puts us into air to ground master mode. Uh, that's perfect. And then we're going to take a little look at the stores management system here. Um, so if I look at the stores management system, it is automatically selected the CM8, which is what the system calls uh, the CO22 AKG, uh, this particular cruise missile. Uh, I'm going to go down to my master arm and turn it on. And then I'm going to press power. Well, actually, yeah, currently power says off. I'm going to press this to power on. Missiles are in standby, flashing. And after a few seconds, we're going to go to armed. Uh, missiles are now ready to use. Um, if this had been a, a cold start, uh, they would go through a three-minute alignment first before they could be used. But uh, we're starting with these already aligned. Mode here on the SMS page, we've got direct, COO, and manual. We're going to be using it in direct mode. Weapon, CM8. As before, I can click on that and change this profile between gun and CM8. We're going to use the CM8. Terminal maneuver, uh, we've got pop-up or skim, just like with the AK model of this missile. Um, this doesn't really matter if you're going to use the man in the loop. However, if we declined to use man in the loop, say we didn't carry the data link or we simply don't make use of man in the loop, uh, it will then do this terminal maneuver and hit the set of coordinates that we've given it. Uh, so it can be totally autonomous if you want it to be. Uh, we have the option of launching a single missile or both. I'm going to launch a single. Target, the target is always going to say waypoint 40. In the GF-17, waypoint 40 is your current sensor point of interest. So that, you know, we're effectively using the SPI. Uh, and cruise, as with the AK version of the missile, we can cruise the missile low, medium, or high altitude. I'm going to leave it low to give it the best chance of getting in there without being spotted. Next, let's get our sensor point of interest. I'm actually going to do this using the air-to-ground radar in mapping mode. Uh, so the radar is already my sensor of interest. I can see that with the asterisk. I could confirm that by pushing uh, S1, sensor control switch, uh, you know, left or right or down, uh, to, and I want to make sure that the asterisk is in the window that I'm actually using. I'm going to use mapping mode. I'm going to bump this range here out to 80 nautical miles. Waypoint 1 is in the region of where I'm wanting to actually attack. Uh, I'm going to put this into slaved mode so that we're, we're going to focus down on, um, on waypoint 1. And I'm going to press S2, or sensor control switch, uh, to the left. That puts us in expanded mode. 
that gives us a nice zoomed in view there. And I'm going to push it again and go into DBS1. And we'll build up a map of that airfield, see if I can pick out the features that I want to attack. Nah, still a little bit too blurry. Let's go sensor control switch left again and go into DBS2, get an even finer map of that area. It's going to take a little bit of time to generate that, I think. Hmm, actually, we might be a little bit too nose on to that target. Uh, it's actually failing to produce one. So that's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do is bring the aircraft out of active pause. And we're going to maneuver the aircraft left until we actually pick up uh, an image of that target area. That's almost certainly the problem here. Okie dokie. That should give us a little bit of Doppler shift there. Pop it back into autopilot. And let's see if we can scan that area. Uh, I'm going to go through the different modes again. Let's see if we get the DBS-1 image. There we go, there's DBS-1. Let's go in again, see if we now get DBS-2. Nope, we are not getting a DBS-2 image. Uh, okay, uh, that might be because we're too far away. Uh, we are actually quite a distance away. So I'm going to see if I can lock something up just using DBS-1. There we go. Okay, that's going to have to suffice this time. So I'm going to slave my crosshairs over roughly where I want the target to be and depress. We do, of course, have man in the middle, uh, sorry, man in the loop uh, guidance in any case. So that should be good enough. Okay, I've now defined my sensor point of interest. And if I look up at the HUD, the weapon is now reading ready. As you can see here on the left-hand side of the HUD, we have CM8 status ready, and we're using air-to-ground radar. And the missile is in direct mode. That is actually all that we have to do in order to make that attack. Uh, the missile is now ready to use. So uh, let's go ahead and push pickle. Missile away. And then, while the missile is in flight, let's get ready with the data link pod. We're going to go menu, pod, and MIL for man in loop. If I select that, we now have an update on that missile. Its current uh, coordinates, direction of travel, distance to the target, and time that the missile has been active. We also have no video signal. Uh, showing here. I'm going to press the S1 sensor control switch to the right to make this my sensor of interest so I can control the missile once it goes terminal and we have this CRS button. If I press that I can immediately uh, switch the missile into active mode and start steering it but we're not going to do that. I'm going to wait for it to get within range of the target. We also have a toggle here to switch between missile 1 and missile 2 if I was operating both missiles at the same time but I'm not. I'm simply going to let this one fly its course uh, and then I will take manual control once it's a bit closer in. You can see the distance there counting down. So this is actually quite quite um, handy in that we do have this constant uh, feed from the missile. Also, if at any point I was to orient or position my aircraft in such a way that the tail antenna of the missile was no longer able to reach us, it would report here that I'd lost signal with the missile. And that would be quite useful, for, you know, a quite useful warning to let me to know to get back into the correct position before the missile goes active so that I will be able to manually control it. Now, of course, if I don't manually control this missile, it will strike the coordinates I've given it. But uh, in this case, it'd be quite nice to uh, demonstrate how the manual control of the missile works. So let's wait a bit longer. Uh, the missile will eventually go active. I'm actually going to accelerate time. Just so we get to the point where we're controlling the missile a bit sooner. Because it, it doesn't do it until 20 kilometers, which actually, there we go. We get TKJ, that's a countdown until the missile is going to go active. Uh, so we got a 20 second countdown now. Let's uh, just accelerate time a little bit until we get to that. Five seconds, get ready on the stick. Okay, missile is, is now active. I'm going to allow it to continue to fly inbound because I'm not actually seeing what I want to see yet. 
uh, you can um, you can press uh, sensor control switch to the right to flip the polarity of the infrared mode. The, the missile actually has infrared and TV modes. Uh, I think you can do sensor control switch right to the long. No, actually you can't. It only does infrared, in fact. Uh, and then sensor control switch forward and aft will allow us to switch between the fields of view. So, I'm going to start steering the missile gently across to the left. We can see the airfield that I'm intending to attack. Let's take one of these uh, hangars. There we go. That's that's pretty much spot on. I'm going to go to the wide field of view again. And in we go. We should now strike the intended target. And boom. No link signal, no video signal. That was an impact. That target was destroyed. Excellent. Okay, so we now have the second missile. That was a demonstration of how direct mode works. We're now going to use COO mode, which is the coordinates mode. So if I focus down on the SMS page, I'm going to switch the mode to COO, and it then asks us what is the PP, what is the pre-planned point. Uh, we can cycle through different pre-planned points if we had multiple. In this case, we only have one pre-planned point, number 36. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to leave it on that one. If there were multiple, I could cycle through them using that. All the other options are the same. Um, so it's you know, weapon selection, terminal maneuver, cruise altitude, pre-planned point, and quantity. This will operate in exactly the same fashion. So I'm going to select... Uh, oh, actually, I can't select it until I fire, I guess. Uh, we're going to want to select Missile 2 once it's airborne. So, let's go ahead and push and hold Pickle. One. Missile 2 is away. Let's focus down here. You can see Missile 1 is flashing. If I press that... Oh, okay, so it, it's not that we select Missile 2 because it's the second missile. We select... We have to select Missile 1 um, because the... You know, it's, this only operates in the event that there are two missiles in flight, basically. So, we've got distance to the target, current coordinates, heading, and time that's been active. Once again, I'm going to accelerate time. Uh, the way that this missile... Sorry, the way that this mode works, COO, is identical to direct. The only difference being the fact that we're targeting a set of coordinates this time, rather than the current sensor point of interest. We're just waiting for that TKJ to appear. There we go. There's the countdown before the missile goes active. Three, two, one. Missile is active. You can see the smoke from the first attack there. I'm just going to let the missile continue to fly inbound. This time I've targeted a TACAN receiver near the centre of the runway. Oh wow, that must have actually been a munitions dump. You can see munitions going off there. That's really cool. I just want to see if it if it automatically starts angling down or if I'm going to have to do that manually. Yeah, I think I have to take manual control. Boom! There we go. We've struck another building there at the target site. So, that's the demonstration of direct and COO modes. I'm going to reset the mission now and get set up to show you manual mode, which is even more exciting. So, I'll show you that in just one moment. Okay, now I've reset the mission and we're ready to demonstrate the final mode in which the C-802 AKJ can be used. MAN, or manual mode. Uh, in this mode, I've pre-programmed a, a set of routing points. If we look at the F-10 map, uh, our aircraft is here. And I've created three routing points here. Sorry, uh, here, here, 
and here, which the missile will follow. If I go into my destination page, you can see them here, defined as waypoints 30, 31 and 32. So let's go ahead and get the missile set up. If I push T1 aft and put the aircraft into air to ground mode, you can see that uh, master arm is on, the missiles are powered on. Let's set the mode to man mode, CMA selected, terminal pop up, quantity one, and here it confirms which waypoints it's going to follow as its flight plan, 30, 31, and 32. I'm going to set the cruise altitude to medium this time. That should make it a little bit easier to control on the terminal maneuver once we have control of the missile. And here on the right-hand multifunction display, I'm going to set up the pod. So menu, pod, MIL for the man in the loop, and I'm going to pre-select missile number one. And we can see here, confirmed, no link signal, no video signal. At this stage, I can push and hold pickle, missiles away, and it will fly straight ahead for a set number of nautical miles to get itself set up, two miles to run. And then it will start to give us the information about where the missile is in the flight plan. So let's wait a little bit longer. And it's now following the flight plan. So it will initially turn to follow uh, routing point number one of three and it's got the distance to that first routing point. And as before, we have confirmation of the coordinates and heading of the missile and its total flight time. We have the CRS button that we can push to take the missile out of cruise mode and immediately take manual control, but we're not going to do that just now. We also have the ability to reroute the missile uh, to the next uh, route point or previous route point in the flight plan, but I'm gonna let it fly through the route points as normal. If I jump into the F10 map, You should see the missile. Why is the missile not in the F10 map? If I go to F6, there it is, and I can see it's flying towards the first routing point. Um, oh, actually, there it is. For some reason, it didn't have its label. <laughs> That's interesting. So there's our missile. It's flying towards the first of the routing points. I'm going to accelerate time a little bit, just so we don't need to wait around too much. It's going to get close to that and then turn to the next one. There we go, just like that. If I return us to normal timing, we can see it's now flying route point two with a set number of miles to go. Let's accelerate time again. And jump to the F10 map. We can see it flying towards that routing point. Now you've got to be careful when you're creating these routing points. That's it routing towards the final one now, uh, because it would be quite easy, of course, to get outside of the 120 degree rear aspect cone of the missile's antenna. And of course, if you do that, you lose all of this information, you know, you'll lose the link signal, and you'll also have no ability to get a video signal when the time comes. Okay, we've got our countdown. Uh, I'm just gonna accelerate time again, just so we get to that countdown a little bit qu uh, quicker. Five seconds to run, let's get ready. Oh, make sure that this screen is our sensor of interest. There it is, we now have a picture. I'm just gonna check the F10 map and see exactly where the missile is. Yeah, it's there. It's flying towards the, the routing point. That's great. The, uh, the airfield should appear in the video soon. I'm gonna push a sensor control switch to the right just to change the polarity there. But otherwise, I'm gonna allow the missile to continue inbound. It's reading five nautical miles to route point number three. I'm going to let it overfly that point, and then once I have a good visual uh, on the airfield, I'll see if I can attack something. Uh, I'm going to think about hitting actually an F-16 that's on the uh, southern ramp. Let's see if I can manage something as ambitious as that. Where is the missile just now? I've now lost sight of the missile. <laughs> yeah, I have not a clue where it is. Heading looks correct, nonetheless. If I press F6, oh, it's already overflown the airbase. Okay, that can be very, very difficult. I was actually, I was at a high enough altitude that I didn't see the airbase. Uh, and I've got no ability to turn around, of course, because I'll lose the signal. That's not ideal. So, of course, we could just fire this missile towards the water uh, and have it explode. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Now that I know that that happens, let's try and launch the other one and see if I can have a little bit more success. Let's uh, once again pre-select missile one, press pickle. We've now got a change of configuration. 
but uh, I'll fix that later. And let's just time accelerate that missile's flight uh, and see if I can actually successfully get this one on target. I guess what we need to do is that pretty much as soon as the sensor goes active, we're going to want to actually angle the missile down uh, so that we can see the airfield. I think we were basically too high and it was a little bit outside of the field of view of the seeker. Okay, not long now, it's going to go active soon. 10 seconds, 5 seconds, I'm going to go real time now. And let, oh there we go, actually that's a much better view this time. Okay. I think I can see the airfield. Yes, yes I can. I can see some hangars. That's good. I think I want to be over here, and I think, let's get some altitude. I think there was an aircraft on the ramp here somewhere, but uh, my angle is not, oh there we go, there's the aircraft. Okay, it's not the F-16 I was hoping for, but let's get this C-130 here. Boom, no video signal. Okay, that was more of a success. That's how you're supposed to use it. As you can see, the man in the loop mode is not the easiest thing in the world to use, although that's the case with most man-in-the-loop style systems, but I was able to get a kill in that instance. You're going to want to make sure that your approach to your target uh, is angled in such a way that it's very easy for you to acquire your intended target. So, uh, I hope that you all enjoyed that. That was a demonstration of the C-802 AKG air-launched cruise missile. I demonstrated direct mode, COO mode, and man mode. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.